In the last video, we learned how to manipulate the data. So we, we know that we can anchor our form and make it scale to the window size, however we wish to scale it up and down, vertical, in, out. And we also learned that this toolbar at the top will allow us to do additional editing, such as adding a new field, deleting a field, um, scrolling through different fields, jumping to a field, or saving data. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add in node elements. What node elements are, are these elements underneath our tables. So if we expand the residence table or data set, and let's scroll down our, or expand our window here physically, the height of it. We can add in the fields that we saw before, like the first name, the last name, the address, city, state, zip. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag in the first name. Let's also drag in the ID just for the fun of it. So we got our resident ID, we have our first name, we have our last name, and then over here we can have our address. the city, let's expand the address out because that's often a little bit longer. State, and zip code and also the date entered. Okay, so there's our basic form and these are our node elements and you're going, well, what's the benefit to that? And we will keep showing you that. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this. Let's load up our form and see what it looks like. So this is going to populate these, again, these are called nodes, these nodes down here. So every time I click on something, notice it's gonna change it based on the row. So this is all the information in the row. And I can actually update the stuff here that I would do as well down here. So for the state, I'll show you in the next video how you can actually manipulate it using a dropdown. But just think Chanahan's or whatever it is. Click on it. Notice that it changes. So the same difference. Uh, date, it's probably a little bit more useful. I can change it to 3. Click off and notice that it changes right there. In the next video, I'll show you how to populate the state with the states table we actually created in the SQL Server, and you can do a dropdown.